let's go through the terminology that you need to know, some of the terminology that you need to know to be able to answer the questions correctly. The first one is to know what a gene is. So over here, I've got a picture which you would find familiar from the very first section of work that we did at the beginning of the year. And you can see that it's a chromosome so it's part of the nucleus, but now it's ready to divide. If you take the chromosome and you unwind it, you would then see that a chromosome consists out of a long string of DNA. And you know that your DNA contains nucleotides with four different codes in, um, in sequences of A, D's, um, A, T's, C's and G's. And then this sequence of adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine then make up a blueprint or a map for what you look like or for what structures in your body looks like, for what proteins look like. And a sequence of quite a few, and they code for amino acids, each three of the nucleotides code for one amino acid in a protein but the sequence basically makes up a blueprint or a map of what you look like or what your proteins look like and so that's a gene a gene codes for a specific protein now when we're busy with genetics you can think of the word genetics we are busy with genes and so with each gene, um, you can get two or more alleles. Now, what is an allele? An allele is coding for a specific gene, but a type of gene of that specific gene. For example, an allele, you can have an allele for blue eyes, that's eye color, or brown eyes. So you have an allele of that gene. What's the gene? The gene is the gene coding for eye color. What is the alleles, blue or brown? So you have different alleles um, of a specific gene. And what happens with those alleles is that you can, let me just make this diagram a bit smaller. You can either have the same allele on both genes over here, then you're homozygous or you can have different alleles. So for example, with this person that we have over here, let's say it's eye color again, that's a nice example to use. So on this side, he's got an, uh, two alleles. He's got one gene, he's got two alleles, but they're the same allele, so they're homo. They're the same, homo means the same, homozygous. So that's blue eyes and blue eyes. Or alternatively, let's say down over here, let's say again, this is the gene for eye color. It could be for brown eyes and for blue eyes. Then he's heterozygous. So he's got an allele for brown eyes and he's got an allele for blue eyes. Now, in the case of eye color, one of them will show. And we call that the phenotype. The brown eyes will show. Uh, because it's a dominant, dominant gene, the phenotype will be brown, although he's got the coding for both brown and blue inside of his genes. So let's just recap for a moment what we've done so far. We know what a gene is. We know in each gene you can have different alleles for that gene. Most of the time we'll be working with two alleles because we'll be working with what we call Mendelian genetics, which focuses only on two alleles. But you can have, in certain cases, many alleles for a certain gene, like the genes that determine height can have many alleles. We will focus on those types of genes that only have two or three different types of alleles, mostly two, but when we do blood groups, we do three alleles. But then you have different types of a certain gene, those are called alleles. If genotypically you contain Two alleles of the same type, we say that you are homozygous, homo meaning the same, or if you have two different alleles, 
for the same gene, you are heterozygous. Yetero meaning different, yetero, heterosexual, you like the different sex. Yetero means different, yetero meaning different. Then, within my genetics, I've got certain genes that might be stronger than other genes. There's, and then I've got certain genes that are the same strength as other genes. And what happens here is we classify three different types according to how phenotypically we see the expression of genes. We have complete dominance, which means that we're going to have a dominant gene that's going to show if it's present. And we're going to have a recessive gene that we'll never see if the dominant is present. We only see the recessive gene if no dominant gene is, is present. And that we call complete dominance. The second one we have is incomplete dominance. Now with incomplete dominance, what happens is that if I cross, for example, this red flower I have over here with the white flower over here, then their children are going to be pink. Their offspring are going to be pink. It's something in between. That's incomplete dominance. The one does not dominate the other one. And that's incomplete dominance. Similar to this, we have co-dominance. Co-dominance. In co-dominance, what we find is like in blood groups. But let me go to another example that, that shows it better. Okay, so over here, we've got complete dominance. Complete dominance says to us that if we have a red flower crossing with a white flower, the offspring, a, 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 just notice, not heterozygous red, homozygous red, dominant, dominant, red, red, and you cross it with a white flower that's totally recessive, completely homozygous recessive. Then we find that all of the offspring are red. Okay, so all of the offspring are red, and that's complete dominance. If we get to incomplete dominance, what happens is that I, for example, roan um, colored animals are like this. Over here, I've got a reddish to brownish color that is mating with a whitish color cow. And when you cross them, it's gonna show white and it's gonna show brown. We call it roam. And so that's, that's what we commonly refer to as co-dominance, co-dominance. What do we, uh, there we have another co-dominance. We have a white flower crossing with a that looks like pink or red. And we see both colors coming out in my, my offspring. When we take a look at incomplete dominance, here we have a white flower and a red flower. And then we cross those two, that's homozygous red, homozygous white. And then we get a pink flower, a heterozygous pink. Another example over here, there's another pink one. We can see the homozygous red crossing with homozygous white, and then we get the heterozygous pink. So this is incomplete dominance. Then let's take a look at co-dominance versus incomplete dominance. So co-dominance, we can see we cross two flowers here, a pink one, and a, or a red one, a red, red to pink and a white one, and both colors are showing. But when we're crossing them and it is incomplete dominance, we get a pink flower. Instead of both that, that pink and white color, we're getting an in-between color. Another example, let me just admit some people in here. There we go. Here's some more examples, and I'm just going to make it smaller for us to see. Okay, so incomplete dominance. Uh, incomplete dominance, 
we find the following, not incomplete them, in, when we, when we have complete dominance. What we see here is if I'm crossing a blue, a blue, um, let's just call it a bubble over there with a yellow bubble, the offspring is going to be blue. If it's co-dominance, we cross the blue with the yellow and they've got both colors. So we've got a, a two color bubble. If we take incomplete dominance, we have blue crossing with yellow and we get something in between, which is in this case, a green bubble. And so know the differences between complete co and incomplete dominance to be able to do, do these questions. Whenever you do a genetics cross, what you need to do is you need to know the format. You're always going to copy this format that you see in front of you. This format, just by copying it, you're getting two marks already. So you get two marks just for copying this because you get one mark for P1F1 and you get one mark for meiosis and fertilization. Other marks are normally awarded for the pheno and genotype of the parent, for the geno and phenotype of the offspring, and then for the crossing, you will get one mark for giving me the gametes, and then that is normally your six marks that you will receive for this type of question. Let's go to one or two questions with regards to this. This first one that we have over here says that in dogs, rough hair is dominant. So we know that we are going to be busy with complete dominance with this question. And it's dominant over smooth hair, which is then recessive. We normally, the capital H then indicates that uh, it's hair and it's rough hair. That's a capital H is the dominant and smooth H is the recessive. A heterozygous rough-haired dog is mated with a smooth-haired dog. Represent a genetic cross to show the phenotypic ratio of the puppy. So I've, I've typed already here rough and smooth because I know that there's a rough one and there's a smooth one. As it said to me, heterozygous rough-haired is mated with a smooth-haired dog represent a genetic cross to show the phenotypic ratio of the puppies. Let's take a look. It's fill in. So, rough head and it's heterozygous rough. So, because it's heterozygous, it's going to have a capital H and a small letter H. Notice where I have my phenotype and what my phenotype is. My phenotype is rough head. What is my genotype? It's heterozygous, so it's capital H, small letter H. And I cross that with a smooth hair. Now, smooth hair is recessive. And because smooth hair is recessive, I know that... Sorry, I'm just admitting people in between here. Yeah? I know that it has to be a small h, small h. Small h and small h. Because that's the only way that the dog is going to have smooth hair, is if he's recessive, recessive. To show phenotypically smooth hair. Then, we are going to now go through meiosis. So we split this capital H and the small letter H. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it up top here. So we split that, H and H, onto the Punnett square. I'm going to take my smooth hair and I'm going to put it on the side here, small letter H and small letter H. Now we need to cross them. When we cross them, it's going to be a capital H and a small letter H together when we cross the two. So capital H from up top, small H from the side. And then a small letter H over here and a small letter H. Okay, so what we see over here is small H from up top and small H from the side. We now go to the bottom 
row over here, capital H, small letter H crossing. And my last one is going to be another small letter H and a small letter H. Okay, Kelly, you have a question. Sir? Yes. So would it make a difference if we were to put the capital H where the small letter H is? Okay, so just uh, always, it, it, it's not going to make a difference. Um, in this case, they didn't indicate, they did not indicate which one was the, the father and which one was the mother. Normally, normally we put the father um, at the top here. We put the father at the top. Um, no, no, nothing meant by that. Okay, so don't, don't take anything personal by being... The, the daddy being at the top, and we put the mother on the side. In this case, they didn't indicate that. Also, in the case of left or right, uh, we normally put the dominant gene rather to the left because we, we always write left to right, we're not Chinese, or we write from top to bottom. So you would normally, if you had a dominant and a recessive on the side here, you'll put the dominant H at the top and the small letter H below. Are they going to penalize you if you don't do it like this? No, they won't. But normally the way that we do it would, would be writing the capital H first and the small h second. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so let's quickly finish this up. Now we have our results. So our genotypes, we're going to say in our genotypes, it's a capital H and a small letter H is the one ratio. And you then just put two dots there. And then your other one would be a small h and a small h. There we go. And in this case, what we find is happening in the specific case is that it is a, a one to one ratio. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio, one-to-one, one-to-one ratio. So 50-50. It's a one-to-one -one or 50-50 ratio. And we normally write that. We say one-one. Or we can also say it's a 50-50 ratio. 50 uh, meaning a percentage. 50% this or 50% that. What is the phenotypes? Okay, so 50% of them are going to be smooth head. 50% are going to be smooth head. Let me just duplicate that quickly. Clone that. 50% will be smooth. And then we're going to find that 50% is going to be rough. Okay, so again, 50-50 ratio. There we go. Or a one, one for every one rough, there will be one smooth. And remember that that's not necessarily how it actually works out. Um, it actually, um, it could be totally different, but this is a, this is a chance encounter. Chances are it's going to be f close to 50-50. Before I move on to the other questions, is there any specific questions on this one? Okay, let's then move on. I'm going to switch on my other camera because the rest of them I'm going to write as you should be writing them. So let me just stop sharing my camera here. And let's go to that. And we want full screen gallery view, now speaker view. There we go. Okay, so I've, I've got a few examples and I've just placed about 10 minutes before the, the, this started, before we started here. I've actually put this onto your Google Classroom as well. I think you might have done these examples before, but they are very good examples. So I'm going to go through them again. I hope you can see clearly enough to do, see the writing. Uh, otherwise, I will be posting, um, I've posted the questions today. Go try them out. There are some easier and more difficult questions. You see they're also marked in a different color when you take a look at the worksheet. And then I'll post the memo tomorrow and then 
please ask then if you have any questions with regard to this. But let's do these questions. Learners want to investigate eye color. Okay, so that's your gene. So eye color is your gene in fruit flies. Drosophila metagodasta. Now don't stress about these scientific names. That's, that's not going to make a difference to your, to your answers. Uh, it's just that they, they, they're going to add some, I almost want to say, they're adding some scientific gibberish just to make it seem harder because this is actually a very easy question. The fruit flies can have uh, red eyes with a capital R or white eyes with a small letter R. That says to me already that this is complete dominance, complete dominance. Then, red eye color is dominant. So I've just confirmed what I thought it was. It's dominant, whereas the white eye color is recessive. So I'm definitely busy with complete dominance here. Male fruit flies, homozygous, that's going to be important, homozygous for red eye. Okay, so that's going to be capital R, capital R. We're bred with female fruit flies with white eye color. Now, I know the white eye color is also homozygous because it shows the recessive trait. So it's small r, small r. Represent a genetic cross to determine the possible phenotypes and genotypes of the F1, the filial one. Let's quickly talk about that F. It stands for what we call filial. F1 means the first generation after the parents. F2, the second generation, so the grandchildren. Now, we need to now... Uh, they're asking us, represent a genetic cross to determine the possible phenotypes and genotypes of the F1 generation for eye color. So let's go through this cross. I've got my basic template. If I draw it just like this, I'm already getting two marks. I will get a mark for P1, F1 together. And I'm going to get a mark for my hosts and fertilization together. It's already going to get me two marks. Two out of five or six marks already, just for copying what you see right now, not even working out anything. Then, phenotype. Okay, so we said male fruit flies, capital R, capital R, like there. That's homozygous, homozygous for red eye color. We cross it with the white eye color, which had to be recessive to show white. So small r, small r. Um, and what did I do wrong here? This is actually not the, that's not the phenotype. So that's the genotype. So I shouldn't have written it there. So I'm just going to swap these two around. Okay, what was the phenotype? That was red eye color, red eyes. And this was white eyes. You'll normally write the phenotype first, as it was in the template. Apologies for that. Now, we then take my red eye color, capital R, capital R, and what happened there was my hostess. You split the R's into two. There's one R going over there and one R going over there. Then you take your small R's, and we're going to put it on the side here, just like we did with the capital R, so those split two. What, what is that splitting? That splitting is my host is happening. Then, fertilization happens. So, first one, capital R from top, and small r from the side, capital R from the top, small r from the side, capital R from the top, small r from the side, and capital R from the top, and small r from the side. So what are my genotypes? They are 100% capital R, small letter R. That means that they are all going to be 100% for eye color. Which eye color? Red eye color. 
because capital R is dominant over small letter R. So red is dominant over white. Okay, so very easy one. This is the most simple one you can get. Let's go on to the next one. Next one is a common one we find with um, when they have a human example. So in humans, the ability to roll the tongue is due to a dominant allow. A father year trazyga. So okay, so you either a tongue roller, you either a tongue roller, so you can roll your tongue, or you can't. In my case, I can't roll my tongue, but most of you should be able to roll your tongues. Is due to a dominant allow. So the moment you hear dominant allow, you know this is complete dominance. Complete dominance. A father yetrozygous for tongue rolling. Okay, so it's capital R. Uh, sorry, they, they use the T here. Capital T, small letter T. Is yetrozygous. Capital T, small letter T. And a mother who cannot roll her tongue, so need, she needs to be small letter T, small letter T. Because she's, she's yetrozygous and she cannot roll her tongue. Um, so homozygous, she cannot roll a tongue. So she's got to have a recessive, recessive allow. Ha they have children. Use the symbols capital T and small letter T for the allows of the tongue rolling characteristic and represent a genetic cross to determine the possible genotypes and phenotypes of the children. So you write out, firstly, again, remember, you're going to get a mark for P1F1. You're going to get a mark for meiosis fertilization already. The phenotype, we have a tongue roller um, and a non-roller over here. Genotype, okay, we know that the dad was yetrozygous. He told us he was yetrozygous, so it needed to be a capital T, small letter T. The non-roller mommy needed to be a small letter T, small letter T. We place that on our planet screen, capital T, small letter T. That's meiosis happening, so we split them up. And mommy's small letter T, small letter T. We cross them, that's fertilization. Capital T, small letter T, small letter T, small letter T. Capital T from top, small letter T from the side. Small letter T from the top, small letter T from the side. And so what do we have here? Our genotypes. Genotypes is capital T, small letter T, or small letter T, small letter T. Those were the only two types I had. Ratio is one to one. And because the ratio is one to one, we can also say that it is a 50% capital T or a 50% small letter T, small letter T. Then our phenotype, let's take a look. Remember, this is complete dominance. So capital T says to me that this is, is going to be a roller. And small letter T, small letter T says to me that he's going to be a non-roller also in a one-to-one -one ratio, or you could say a 50% roller and a 50% non-roller ratio. Okay, I think we have time for one more. I see we have about seven minutes and 30 seconds left. So let's try just one more. Now, read carefully now. And take a look at also the letters that they are using. A homozygous snapdragon plant with red flowers. So capital R, capital R, because he's homozygous. Then was cross-pollinated with a homozygous snapdragon for white color, but they used a capital W, not a small letter R. So this says to me that over here, I'm going to either have what we find incomplete dominance 
or we're going to have co-dominance, which we'll see in a moment what it is, depending on what the offspring is going to be. But we do not have complete dominance here. So in this case, she was also homozygous. So this needed to be WW, both capitals. All the plants that grow from the cross had pink flowers. So now we can say, okay, so this is not co-dominance. This is incomplete dominance because I, I, I get a color in between the red and the white. Then, represent a genetic cross to determine the genotype of the F1 generation of the plants. So, phenotype. So, just read the question, but they're asking again, represent a genetic cross to determine the genotype of the F1 uh, generation of plants. So easy one, I ne just need the F1. Now remember P1, F1, that's gonna already get me one mark. Meiosis fertilization already gets me one mark. Phenotypes of, phenotypes that I'm crossing is a capital R, capital R, and a capital W, capital W. Sorry, uh, that's my genotype. I'm swapping them around again. Apologies. What's my phenotype? My phenotype is the red flower times the white flower. We have meiosis, so capital R, capital R, capital W, capital W. We have fertilization, R from the top, W from the side. R from the top, W from the side, R from the top, W from the side, R from the top, W from the side. So these are my genotypes and that's what they asked. All of my genotypes were capital R, capital W. They didn't ask my phenotypes. I can say, okay, all of them were pink. They actually gave it to me, all of them were pink but they asked me what is my genotype and it's a hundred percent capital R, capital W. So just see how much time we have left. We have four minutes left. We'll maybe be able to do one more. Can I just ask, is there any questions on any of the ones we did so far? Sir? Yes, Kelly. Sir, if to say there was like ask us to calculate like the 75 percent percentage how would we do it okay so remember if we have let's say for example my ratio ended up to be three to one okay so if the ratio ended up to be let me just move up my paper here if the ratio ended up to be three to one then if we take a look at percentage wise for every three you're going to have one of the other types so 75% of the four, then if you add those three plus one, it equals four. Three plus one is four. So 75% is of course then the, this one. And 25% is going to be the other type. So that's a, that's a, that's a common ratio we find when we crossbreed, uh, yet, when we crossbreed yetrozygous and then we normally find a 75, uh, 25 ratio. So three to one ratio. So it's all ratios. Three times for every three we have of this type, we have one of that type. And that's a three to one ratio or 75, 25 ratio. And it's a common one we find when we cro uh, crossbreed yetrozygous and yetrozygous. Let's take a look at that. Let's, let's say we take these RWs, okay. Uh, but we make a, a, a recessive one and a, a complete, complete dominance. So let's say I'm crossing these two. I draw my Punnett square. I'm not going to do the whole template now. So let's say we have capital R, small letter R, capital R, small letter R. So capital R, capital R, capital R from top, small letter R from the side, capital R from the side. 
uh, um, and uh, small letter R from the top. And the last one is going to be small letter R from the top and small letter R from the side. Now take a look. If this is complete dominance, and this was, for example, color. If R was dominant, if R was dominant and it was a red color, and small r was the white color, what's going to happen here is we're going to have one, two, three. One, two, three, that's going to be red. Three red, because they all contain capital R's. And we're going to have one that is white. One that is white, because it is a recessive, recessive allele. It's only got the white gene. It hasn't got the, the red gene. So three to one ratio, 75%, 25%. Okay, that, that answer your question, Kelly? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, that's all that we have time for today. Please, you guys have been posting some questions to me on the WhatsApp groups and on the Google Classroom. If you have questions, please ask. Um, the more you practice this, the easier it gets. So practice and don't just go and look at the memo and then copy the memo. That's not helping you. You need to practice it. Get it right. Get it wrong. Doesn't matter. Just as long as you can see when you have made mistakes, what your mistakes are, and you can correct them. And that is how you learn this section of work. So I'm posting today, I've posted the worksheet and tomorrow I'll post the memo, but we need to start with the year after.